Hi everyone, my name is Dylan Hun, and I'm a software engineer on the Angular Framework team. One of our biggest new features in Angular 14 was typed forms, and I'm here to speak about some of the key points. So I'm going to start with some motivating background for why we made this change. Then I'll give some quick examples to show you the kinds of bugs that you can catch with typed forms. Then we'll spend most of our time getting a much more in-depth examination of some of the key design details, especially around value and control types, nullable and optional controls, and quite a lot more. And then we'll finish up with some discussion of what we have in store for the future. So let's start with the motivating background. In particular, you'll need to know about reactive forms. And this is probably already familiar to most of you, so I'll move quickly through this part. Reactive forms are one way to build forms in Angular. Uh, the other is template-driven forms. Um, but reactive forms require that you explicitly declare the structure of your form in TypeScript code. And the explicit data model gives you quite a few benefits, like explicit state management, and as of Angular 14, strict types. So in general, every form corresponds to a data schema, or the shape of your data. And uh, this is a TypeScript type corresponding to information about a party. So it has inner objects, in this case the address field, it has inner arrays, like the menu, and it's not actually ever required to explicitly declare this schema, but it can be a good practice. So this is the corresponding reactive form. Uh, and as I mentioned previously, a reactive form requires us to explicitly declare the form structure, which is what we're doing. The address field is modeled as a form group, the menu is modeled as a form array, and Previously, interacting with complex forms models like this could be fairly hazardous. Uh, for example, this snippet actually has a bug, um, the value of place is a number, so calling a substring on it is a runtime error. And the goal of type forms is to catch this kind of bug at compile time. So these new types affect the entire model API surface, including ordinary values and subvalues, calling dot get for inner nested controls, the observables that we use for state management, and all of the rest of the model API. Uh, so another big benefit is autocomplete. So now that all the fields on a form group are statically known to the compiler, your editor can autocomplete them, and this is a huge help when you're dealing with really complex, deeply nested forms and form groups. So although this is a big change, it's 100% backwards compatible. All forms code will be opted out using an automatic migration. Um, so in particular, every usage of a forms class, like form group or form array, will be replaced with a corresponding untyped class. Um, and this migration is super robust. We actually ran it against all Angular projects at Google, so this will not break your app. Um, users can adopt the types one control at a time, totally incrementally. Uh, you don't have to do it as one big bang migration. Um, and along those lines, we support gradual typing. And what I mean by this is you can have untyped controls inside of typed groups or vice versa. Um, there's no need to even do one entire form all at the same time. And the last thing is this untyped option is not going anywhere. In fact, it's actually necessary in some cases, as you're going to see later. So the type forms issue on GitHub was several years old, and it had around 1,000 upvotes. Uh, and so this was a great reason to implement this. So it was less a matter of if and more a matter of how. But you might be wondering, like, why didn't we get to this sooner? And as it turns out, although Angular has evolved a lot over the years, so has TypeScript. And it's easy to forget, but TypeScript was actually quite new when Angular 2 first entered beta, all the way back at TypeScript 2.0. And since then, in 2.1, TypeScript gained map types along with the key of operator. Uh, map types let you map one object type onto another object type. Um, TypeScript gained conditional types, it gained templar literal types, and as we're going to see in a minute, all these features actually turned out to be crucial for adding types to the forms API in a way that's fully backwards compatible. Okay, so before we get into the nitty gritty, let's see a couple examples of the kinds of errors that these types can prevent. So here again is the same reactive form from earlier and we're trying to call set value on it. But since we're missing a key for house, we now get a compile time error. It tells us the property house is missing from this expected object. And here we've added a key, but the name of the key is incorrect. We're using the name number instead of house. And again, this is a compile time error. Now, we could have used patch value instead of set value, which relaxes the constraint. We can now actually omit keys, and this is totally fine. But again, if we specify a key with an incorrect name, this produces a compile time error. So we have the benefit of strong types in a couple other places too. As I mentioned, the dot get method, which actually accepts a string containing a path through your nested form groups. 
uh, as well as the observables. When you have this callback function in, this, in your observable, v will now be strictly typed, it's type number. Um, okay, so now that you have an overview, let's jump into the key details of the design. Starting with one of the most important topics, the distinction between value types and control types. So consider this form group for an address. You could access its value or you could access its controls, and these have two related but different types. The value is the shape of your data, as we saw earlier with our party example. Uh, so here, the value associated with street is string. On the other hand, the controls are forms container classes, and they have values inside of them. So the street is a form control with a string inside. And a value type by itself is actually not enough to fully infer a forms model. So this example value type describes a date. It has day, month, and year. And on the right, we have one possible control type that might correspond to this value type. And this would be a form that has three individual controls inside. However, there is an alternative interpretation. Uh, as you heard from Zach earlier, this could be a date picker widget. Um, and date picker widgets are commonly implemented as a single form control. And that form control takes an object, which has three keys, day, month, and year. So this illustrates that the value type alone is actually not enough to always infer the control type. Um, and for this reason, type forms uses control types, not value types. So one of the trickiest backwards compatibility issues with type forms relates to resetting the controls. So as an example, let's consider the simplest possible form, which is just a single control. Um, and this example control contains a string, so we might expect that the type is form control of string. But the tricky detail is that when you're working with a form control, you can call reset at any time. And when that happens, the control will immediately become null. So this means you can't always assume the value is a string because any caller could set it to null. And so in previous Angular versions, this example would crash at runtime because you can't call substring on a null value. So Angular now protects you from these kinds of errors because the type of dog will be inferred as string or null. And TypeScript enforces that you handle the null case. But sometimes this is not actually the behavior that you want. So as of Angular 14, form controls have a brand new option called non-nullable. Instead of resetting to null, the control will reset to its initial value. And as you might expect, this also removes the null from the controls type. So in this example, we've gotten rid of the nulls entirely, and calling.substring is now provably type safe. So old code will have a constructor that just has a value. So again, null will be inferred in the type. Um, it'll look like this. Whereas by adding the non-nullable option, you simply get form control number. So another crucial backwards compatibility issue involves disabling controls and the effect that the disabled controls have on a form's value. With Angular forms, disabled controls are never included in the form's value. And uh, the original reason for this actually is if you have an HTML form and you disable just a plain old HTML form and you disable its, its fields, when you submit it, those fields will be missing. So Angular sort of copies this behavior. But uh, this has a consequence, which is that when you call dot value, and it's missing, the type has to know that each key is optional. So that's exactly what happens here. Um, we see that both name and lives are optional, they're potentially undefined. And when you use these values, the type system will enforce you handle the possibility that these keys could be missing. Um, so that's a lot of undefines to deal with. Um, when you're working with dot value, every key could be undefined, that you're gonna have to write optional chaining operators, you're gonna have to put exclamation points. Um, here's an example where we have name question mark dot. So can we do better? And the answer is yes, we can use dot get raw value. And dot get raw value is uh, an existing part of the forms API that gives you the value including all of the disabled keys. Uh, so as a result, there's no more optional chaining required. Uh, and I think for most use cases, if you don't care about whether the control is disabled or not, you should use dot get raw value. So that's not the only case in which you might have optional keys in your form. Uh, much of the time, you don't fully know the structure of your form group in advance, uh, but there are still certain properties that we can exploit to provide at least some degree of type safety. So on the one hand, if you know all the keys that might be present, uh, we can treat them as being optional at the type level. So um, there's a second case where you don't know all your keys in advance, it's sort of an open-ended form group, but all of your values have the same type. And then of course the final case is you don't know the keys in advance and all the values are different. So let's uh, have a look at these three cases. The first case, optional known keys. Uh, so sometimes you want to be able to freely remove keys from your form. Here we're trying to call dot remove control with the name key. And this is now a compile time error because this form is expected to have both of its keys always present. Um, but with type forms, we can now explicitly specify which keys on the form are optional. And we do that using TypeScript's question mark notation. 
Um, so this allows the type system to enforce, we always safely handle controls that might be missing. And here I've done it for both controls, but you could just as well equally do it for only one. So the other kind of mutable group that I mentioned a moment ago involves unknown keys, but all the values are homogenous. Um, and this, as it turns out, is actually very similar to a type that's built into TypeScript called record. So record, uh, as with sort of uh, what, I was just, what I was just getting at, is an open-ended object where all the values are the same, but you can add any key that you want. Um, and it turns out that by providing record to the form group type parameter, we can actually get exactly this behavior. Um, but this is a little bit complex to type out. Um, it's not inferred automatically. So with Angular 14, we've introduced a brand new type called form record. Uh, form records allow you to have open-ended dynamic form groups where all of the values are homogenous. Uh, there's no need for an explicit type. This is completely inferred. Um, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the last case is form groups that cannot be typed. So here we don't know the keys ahead of time and all the values are heterogeneous, so there are no useful type guarantees we could make in the forms API. So in this case, you should fall back to untyped form group. So as you just saw, we've introduced these new untyped symbols, but what is an untyped form group anyway? So as it turns out, no separate implementation is actually needed uh, because we designed the types to facilitate full backwards compatibility. It's just a typed group with the type parameter T set to any. And this also gives us the property that the two names are fully intercompatible. There is no extra code. You can always substitute them for one another. So in addition to form group, we've also brought these new types to form array. Uh, let's have a look. Form array now infers its type from the controls inside and enforces that newly added controls match the expected type. So in this example, we infer that the form array contains number valued controls. So we cannot add a form, array, a form control of string. Um, and for heterogeneous arrays, again, much like the form group case, we can't prove anything useful about the types. So for those, you'll want to fall back to untyped form array. So those of you who are familiar with reactive forms will know there's another API that you frequently use, form builder. Um, and we've brought some new features to form builder to make it working with typed forms easier and more convenient. So here's a typical usage of form builders group method. Um, we have a name key, which is being given the array shorthand notation. It has a value and validators. We have a goal key, which is being populated with a bare value. And the where key is an object with its disabled field set. Um, so as you can see, form builder has an extremely polymorphic API. Uh, and you can pass it all these different argument shapes. But in the overwhelming majority of cases, we can still automatically infer your types with no explicit type annotation required. So indeed, in this example, the value of name will be inferred as string or null. So as we saw earlier, let's say we want to get rid of this null. Uh, as we saw earlier, uh, we could create the control directly. We could pass this dot non, uh, this non-nullable argument. Uh, but form builder now gives us a more concise way. Instead, we can say form builder dot non-nullable. And uh, this new non-nullable field, when you use it with a group or array, it's going to make all the implicit inner controls that you constructed non-nullable. So you don't have to repeat yourself on every control. Um, so here, Pavel's name just has type string. So let's talk about dot get. Um, I think this is one of the most interesting implementation details. Um, and although you don't have to know how it works under the hood to use it, it is really fascinating. Uh, so here's a usage of dot get. Uh, you pass in a string literal. Uh, it's just a dot separated path. And we'll walk your form groups. We'll say inside the address form group, inside the house form group. Or I guess that would be a form control in this case. Um, but you could extend this arbitrarily. You could have many dots in the string you give it. And I promised you earlier that we'd see some of the advanced TypeScript features from recent language versions. And these strict types for dot get are only possible because of template literal types. Um, <laughs> so I hope you attended Craig's talk yesterday. And let's see how this works under the hood. Uh, so we take that string s that you pass in and we tokenize it at compile time to extract the names of the fields that we need to navigate. So S has to be a string literal. Uh, if S is a string variable, there's nothing we can do statically. So the first thing we check is we say, does string generally extend S? And if so, we bail out early. Um, so now this is our template literal type. And we're looking for this delimiter D, which is going to be a dot for form group dot get. Everything before the delimiter is inferred as T. Everything after it is inferred as U. Um, and then the result is an array where T, the, the, uh, the things before the delimiter, is the first result, and the rest, of the rest of the results come from recursively tokenizing what's left of the string. And then finally, we have our base case. Uh, when there are no more delimiters, it's just the string. So this isn't the only helper type that we're using for dot get. Uh, we actually have to navigate the form groups, for example, but 
uh, hopefully this demonstrates the general flavor of the kind of thing we're doing to make this work. So I want to say a couple words about our long-term plans for typed forms, um, especially other improvements that these types might enable. So what about templates is a common question I get asked. And uh, so the current types only affect the TypeScript code. Uh, and we'd like to bring some safety improvements also to the templates. Um, so we have this abstraction called control value accessor. And control value accessor acts as the bridge between your templates where the directives attach and your, your explicit form is model in TypeScript. And we use this heavily to implement Angular's own built-in control types. Uh, you might use it to implement custom controls. And you might wonder, well, can we just add a generic type parameter here? Um, and so that actually works. Uh, or that, that actually, that's actually pretty simple to reason about in this simplest case, where a form control string would map onto an input type equals text. Um, but what do we do about more complex types? For example, a form control with a union type and its type argument, or two nested form groups. And this is sort of an open design question. So this is something we're going to be working on in the future to try to figure out how to bring some of these improvements over to your templates. Um, the way it works today, you have to add non-nullable if you're explicitly constructing a form control, as I mentioned. Um, and this can be a little verbose, although you can use the form builder dot non-nullable. So this is something else we're looking at improving by flipping this default so that controls are non-nullable by default and you have to opt in to the reset to null behavior. Um, so those are a couple of things we're thinking about for the future. So in conclusion, you can use typed forms today. Uh, update to Angular 14 and it's available. Um, everything is fully backwards compatible. The migration will run automatically when you update. Um, and we are incredibly excited about all the future improvements this unlocks. Um, so I hope that this gave you some insight into all the design issues affecting type forms. Uh, if you want more updates about Angular forms or about Angular in general, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, thank you, everybody, and have a great rest of your conference. Yeah!